Hello boys and girls. In this video, I will show you a quick implementation of everything that you need to, if given an elliptic curve and a base point on it, take any number, secret number, private key, and return a, another point on the elliptic curve, which corresponds to the public key or a little bit down the line to the address on a blockchain application, for example. So um, here we see over the real numbers an elliptic curve. This is given by some simple algebraic equation that we're going to look at in a second. And this comes together with a special base point G. This is some point on the curve way out there on uh, this, on this two dimensional plane, if you will. And there is then a procedure to take uh, this secret number and return another point, special point on the curve, which is def thereby linked to the secret number. And this is the correspondence between the private key and the public key. So um, in a video four days ago, I um, showed you the Python implementations on how to take a secret number and get the familiar uh, wallet input format private key this is what you people usually understand it's private key this is some you know ugly st string which is checksummed and has the same information as just this number and um, if you, um, you know, sign a message for example on the uh, Bitcoin blockchain then what happens is that this number is multiplied with this base point G and uh, out comes another point on the elliptic curve that is not the base point um, and this is the so-called public key that uh, the x coordinate of which is then hashed to the address that corresponds to the uh, private key. This is uh, these implementations to get from the secret private key to the wallet input format private key, as well as how to get from the public key, which is the point, to the address corresponding to it. Uh, I did the implementations in, uh, in, in Python. Basically, I used just the hashing library but otherwise for our Python, I discussed it here. Um, and in this video, to get from the private key to the public key, I had used the elliptic curve uh, digital signa signature algorithm library that you can you know, pip install for Python. You can just download. And I said I, uh, I didn't want to hold myself up with the math um, and I will uh, do that in another video. And this is this video. This video is how to get actually from the number to the public key in the first case, what we did in three lines here with the Python library. Okay, so um, there is a wiki, uh, Bitcoin wiki, and there's uh, a page specifying the elliptic curve used on the uh, for the Bitcoin protocol, and the same is then used for the Ethereum protocol as well. Um, and this is the name of this specification. This is the parameters of this elliptic curve and the base point. Here is again a, this sort of picture, but over the, the real numbers, and here's the specification. So here we see, here's the generic form of an elliptic curve. Okay, this is this equation y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. And this is to be understood uh, over some field and in the case of uh, cryptography as humans use it, um, this is to be understood on the, this finite field. Um, so, I mean, simply speaking, this, is, this just means you take all numbers between zero and some huge number P. This is this number here, pri uh, some prime number has like, s m if you write it down in decimal representation, many dozen zeros, um, or many dozen digits anyway. And um, for all these three numbers, A, B, and P, you get another uh, finite field elliptic curve. And in the case of Bitcoin, A is actually uh, set to zero, so A doesn't actually show up, and B is set to a super small number, namely the number seven. So the, and, and P is this huge thing, and so the elliptic curve is actually just what you see here, uh, Y squared equals X cubed plus seven. Um, legal points on the elliptic curve and, and thus legal private uh, public keys legal public keys are those points in a two-dimensional plane with x and y coordinate that exactly fulfill this equation right so for example uh, 
I, I, I can plug in uh, x equals one and then the left, the right side would be eight. Okay, this is not uh, over the national numbers the square of anything. So this would not be a legal point and you get how this works, right? So, so you can now go and try and find points which actually lie on that curve. Well, there's one point um, which lies on the curve, which is also part of the specification. Namely, this is this point G, this is the base point and it has X coordinate as such. Here's only the hex representation. So this is the uh, representation with in base 16, where the number 10 is an a, capital A and so on. Um, so this is not very nice to read for us because we use the decimal representation, just uh, 10 characters and not 16. But nonetheless, this is just some number. This is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate of this point. Okay. so. In hexadecimal representation, it starts with 7, 9, B, blah, blah, blah. This is just a point on the curve. And um, what, then, uh, what then the algorithm is to get from any natural number in, in, in a certain range, we we'll call the order of the, um, for the curve, uh, to get to a point on the curve, the public key, right? The secret is going to be the private key. This is just some number. The public key is a point on the curve, which is the public key. Um, we need an, some algorithm given the, the specification that we just saw to get from a number to a point. Okay, and uh, the algorithm is as follows. You just take the point and in some sense add the point to itself as many times as the, the, the number is, right? So if, you're, if your secret number should be something big, but let's say for the sake of explanation, the number, secret number is 30, then you take the base point G and add it to itself once and then another time and another time you add the point to itself uh, 29 times. So we have G plus G plus G plus G, 30 times in total. And um, and then you get an, a result, uh, which is with the algorithm that we are going to like graphically explain in a second, another point. And this is going to be your public point. And the X coordinate of that point is then hashed a couple of times and that's your address uh, that you, if you, if you use uh, Bitcoin, you're familiar with. Okay, so what is actually the algorithm that, uh, like in, in more practically speaking, that takes you from this number using the base point G to some other point? Well, uh, what we need for that is the addition of two points on an elliptic curve. What does it mean to add two points on an elliptic curve? Here's an elliptic curve, the red line over the reals. What does it mean to take two points on the curve and add them together? That's the first question. Um, okay, uh, here you see um, the, the algorithm to do that, uh, you know, point doubling, point addition. This is described here. Um, here's also some pseudo code, and I will quickly show you the code that we're going to see in the implementation. But um, to like give you a, this sort of graphical explanation, you see it as follows. So, um, what you essentially have to do is given any two points, let's say P and Q, okay, to get the result of their addition, um, which according to this, uh, you know, definition of this, uh, um, these uh, names here is going to be minus R. So the, the, the result of the addition of P and Q is minus R to get minus R. What you have to do is the following. You take P and Q, you draw a line between them. And this line is going to intersect with the elliptic curve at another place, this point R. And then uh, from there, um, you take the, the negative and we can just say, um, this is basically just mirrored, mirroring it uh, along the X axis. So um, with this like graphical procedure, you can see how you get new points, right? You take this point, this point, draw a line, you get to a point and then you move it around, uh, move it down, for example, here. And then you have another point. And so in this way, you have an idea of how it is possible, given some curve, which has this bend, um, to take two points and get to another another point, right? So this is the, the addition of two points on an elliptic curve, which is implemented in the algorithm. And we have a base point. And what happens is we add the point to itself. Okay, let's quickly think about what it means for take a point and add it to itself. Well. Okay, so for example, 
imagine this point Q um, like not being here but being cl closer to P. Let's say it's here, right? Then this connection would be like from P to Q would be here, and the line would be like almost like vertical. And um, the elliptic curve goes like goes upwards, and the point where this the, the blue line will intersect the red line is very far out, but nevertheless it's a valid point. Um, and then you flip it again to get the addition, right? So this is if the point Q lies here. And then if you like, if this procedure becomes more and more degenerate as P and Q becomes the same, then you can uh, hopefully see that to to add the point to itself, uh, the line you must take is actually the tangent line of P uh, on the red line. So here what we say is, is an example of this. Here um, uh, we have Q added to itself, which means you take actually the tangent line uh, at, at the point uh, um, at the point Q and you get uh, another intersect here of the point P and then if you flip that down, you get the result of Q, Q and Q, which is minus P. Okay, so this th uh, taking any point and and adding it to itself means you take the tangent, you see where the tangent intersects with the elliptic curve, and then you have to do another flip down. Here you see the definition of the flip down. By the way, here it says if this uh, if if P and Q lie on the vertical line, then the addition of them is zero, meaning P equals uh, minus or m minus P equals Q, right? So. The negative of the point on the elliptic curve just means negative in the x uh, in the wider direction having the x component uh, be fixed okay so this is graphically speaking the addition and so now uh, as a repetition um the, the bitcoin specification comes with an elliptic curve that we just saw and base point which is far out and then if you have the for example the private key 30 then what you want to do is you add the you take the point G and add the point G to itself another uh, twenty nine times. So you take to to, to compute two G. You take uh, G and you compute the tangent. You get another point, and then you you take this new point that you you know you flip it and you get this new point, and then to compute three G like G times three, you take the uh, the point you just got, which is two G, and Add it to the original G, then you have three G, right? And uh, you do this so many times as you have the your what, whatever your secret is. And um, the the nice thing about this is that um, if you, for example, want to compute eight G, right? You only have to do three operations because you you first compute two G, they get a point, and then you you uh, if you add the point to itself, you get four G, right? This the computation is in a, in a sense exponential because you, um, to get from from a g to sixteen g, you don't have to add eight more times, but you can just double a g. Uh, so in this way, the elliptic curve is some, somehow special because it sort of behaves like numbers, and uh, this exponential computation of the of this point uh, uh, is also what secures the sort of the system because given the result uh, you cannot really go back exponentially but okay this is like a, a complexity theory theoretical like point um i uh this was sort of a course like very graphical uh, like explanation but i hope the idea is not clear the bitcoin is an uh, comes with a specification of a curve and a point and given any number which is our private key some secret number we get a public key point by you know if a private key is called s then we just compute g times s you know, this involves computing a bunch of tangents and jumping around on the curve and there's a math that goes together with that okay so uh here is the script that we're going to discuss ignore all the my uh my other files open here um uh, there's, by the way, an, an edgy hot takes uh, video coming up eventually. Maybe at the end of the year, I, I uh, collect some some uh, reflection on the year and uh, philosophical points in the in the sciences. So look forward to that. Uh, here's here's my notes note taking file. Okay, so um, I will quickly go through this 200 line file uh, and then show you 
validated against the, the you know, professional library and then take a more closer look at the functions again. Maybe I sh uh, manage to do that in the next 10 minutes. So, okay, here's uh, one auxiliary function that you can ignore. This is just doing what it says here. It returns an X such that the input uh, with the small operation equals one, okay? Here's a related um, Wikipedia link. Um, if you're interested in that, I'm going to use this function twice in the, um, in the class that we are going to discuss now but it's like very basic. By the way, the original reference, or it's, I think it's not the origin, but uh, one reference to implementation is is uh, this here. You can find this below in the gist, in the gist gist, um, if you want to see uh, uh, like another implementation of that. Basically, what I will discuss here is a rewrite of that, a simplification of what you find there. Um, but in any case, you should always just use a professional library and, and neither ones of the scripts if you want to actually do something with, you know, monetary value attached or something or actual secrets. So, okay, let's ignore this. This is just like a, a plain function. You can see what, what, what it, it intends to do on this Wikipedia page. The main object that does our job here is this Python class, which implements a point on the elliptic curve. Okay, the, the initialization of the point um, is passed also the curve. The curve is just is a, just a dictionary with these three values, A, B, and P. Um, right, F to re remind you quickly, um, the point, the curve is just this. Point is specified by specifying A, B, and P. And for Bitcoin, you see the values here. Um, and then you pass X and Y. Uh, Upon initialization, this code actually checks that uh, indeed the this point lies on the curve, um, and that's that's the point. That's how I initialize a point, and this point now has uh, a bunch of functions. Okay, firstly you return the coordinates, and then you have an addition function where you add another point to it, and and this point the class instance becomes in the new point. Um, then you have this doubling, okay that we just discussed graphically. And then you have this scalar multiplication where you uh, pass a number and it computes this point by doubling a couple of times. So for example, if you, pa if you pass the number um, 13, uh, then it takes uh, G and doubles it, 2G then doubles it to 4G then doubles it to 8G. And then uh, it takes 8G and 4G adds them together, get 12G and adds another G, then you have your, your point, right? So this like exponentially fast computes your, your point, which is going to the, be the public key from this. Um, okay, then there's the point in, of, on, on infin infinity. This is also like a mathematical detail. It's sort of the degenerate case out there. And now to validate this, this class, um, I, I have wrote this this small like uh, check where I check it against the uh, EC DSA library. This is the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm library that I also used in the previous video. So what happens here? Well, first I uh, define the Bitcoin curve. This is just the the dictionary with zero, seven, and this huge P. Okay, as we saw on the wiki page. I define then this this uh, Koblitz curve, this curve also specified in the wiki. I pass it the curve and I pass it this point G, right? We saw this, this was like the X coordinate starts with seven, nine, B, da, 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 in hex, uh, like base 16 uh, representation. And then also the, this order, um, this is basically the, the, the largest uh, allowed uh, secret that you can use on the, on, on the Bitcoin protocol. Um, it's also stated then on, on this on this wiki, and and so this specifies the 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 the, the curve and uh, the the base point on the curve basically. And then what I do here is I, I implement this function which tests against the elliptic curve one. So what happens here is, given a, a secret and a, a public point that I want to validate is actually the result of taking this secret and doing this. Um, iterated multiplication, right? Um, iterated addition. Here I compute the public key using this library, which we also did in the last video. This is just these two lines, these two lines. And then you have this public key and uh, this function only returns true if this public key 
and the x coordinate is this the y coordinate is this is actually the same as the the point here and and this thing what you see in the middle is just uh, a cast from integers um, which this point class uh, produces to the hexamal uh, expressions that are specified in the um, in, in in this library and also used on, on bitcoin um okay and i, I use this then to test uh, the loaded you know more professional elliptic curve library against my um my scalar multiplication function this is the multiplication function that we just saw is a member of this this class i define some secrets here one two nine some huge one and then the the biggest one the biggest secrets these are the private keys just not in with format but they are the same private keys it's just in in decimal representation and then i i, I loop over this list of secrets I compute the public points with the custom implementation function and I call this as uh, this uh, check function and if it's success then I assert it um, if I do anything wrong then this will fail and then I say print out check mark validated the secret so let's do that um, here if I call the script then it tells me everything is perfectly validated so all these secrets here are indeed uh, correct so here you see this is the, the largest um, legal Bitcoin uh, private key and they are all fine if I change anything in the script and so that it no, it's not actually the real implementation I don't know do anything like let's go with here with five then this will break break badly yeah so that didn't work out um, let's do another like for example if I change the base point somehow okay let's add a zero here a zero instead of nine let's say uh, then this will also necessarily break yeah probably the, the base point is not even on the curve right so let's go back and okay okay so now that you see uh, how, how things work le like I will not discuss the math any further I can manage to stay in under half an hour but I will just give you more time to stare at the code right so again, to instantiate a point, we pass these values. They are all saved uh, as member variables of this of this class. Some checks are done, you know, whether the, the, the point that you passed actually lies on the curve and then uh, something to do with this um, degenerate point outside. Coordinate, this is just a getter function. And then the addition here is implemented. But first checking the, the special simple cases, the degenerate cases and um, here are like some um, also some simple functions if you want to add uh, yeah the, I mean these are like also represented with the, the images we, we saw before right so here you, s you can you can already see like s some some cases that what should happen so if you have here this point here um, then this is it, it, its own negative and, and you know there are these special cases just like they are with numbers right um, And uh, this is also then implemented here. Okay, and here is uh, this uh, relatively simple addition. Uh, what hap what has to happen with with the points to to be added? So here, you see um, what is interesting here. Well, there's just a bunch of multiplications and additions involved. We can look at the Wikipedia page. See what it has to be in in mathmat. Math uh, Mathematical terms. So here you have the same thing. What is addition, right? You want to compute R from P and Q, and you have to implement this this sort of thing, right? You, there's some L involved, and then you have to square it, and this is just w what you have to do to mathematically compute the tangent and line and so on. And uh, this is exactly that. I think L is la the lambda, and here's it squared, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you re you return the new point that you get. The doubling. Sorry, but in addition of two points, there's not necessarily a tangent line involved, but if you double, then there's a tangent line involved. And so here is also the, like this case implemented, looks like so. And then finally, the scalar multiplication, it has to take this E, this number, like how many times you want to add the, the point to itself. In our case, it will be started with the base point. And um, 
so you have to uh, look at the, the like e how many iteration this that encodes and what is done here is that e is taken in the binary representation to, to see how to smartly do this exponential thing that i said right so again if you want to multiply multiply the base point by <coughs> 11 then you don't do g plus g plus g plus g plus c but what you do is g plus uh, g to get to 2g this thing with itself to get to 4g this thing to itself to get to to um, AG and then you get to 11G by AG plus 2G plus 1G, right? So you, ha you can reduce the number of required additions. And so to decompose this number 11 um, to like how to smartly do it, this is like happening here with this number E, that E for exponent also because, well, whatever. Um, so the, 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 you know, you, if you have uh, like, if you, okay, I don't really want to discuss terminology, but um, if you have, uh, uh, for example, if you have an algebra, like which is a vector space, like some Lie algebra, for example, then you can have, if it's a mat matrix algebra, uh, multiplication by scalars and multiplication by elements of the uh, the the same uh, like object, like two Lie algebra elements and so on and so forth. And so uh, this these numbers like the uh, exponent and, and multiple they get, get a little bit mixed up so you will see various con uh, conventions here but here's here it was called e i didn't really rename it from um, what it was also called in this reference uh, that i linked to this gist um yeah and finally uh to do this you have to to loop around through your uh the binary represented uh, exponent or binary represented secret number and this is what happens here and um here addition is called uh, in some cases s is specified in the algorithm you have to, to flip the y and this is happening here you see here the the y coordinate is get, uh, sorry the y coordinate gets a minus sign here sorry um okay so uh, uh that's that's pretty much it i mean here you see this this implementation is pseudo code What happens here? Okay, and and that's pretty much what's going on. This is also what the, the library does. So now you understand how to get from a number using the specifications of the Bitcoin curve to a point on it, which is then the private key. And again, if you take a private key, like you take from the, 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 the private key is, is thirty, you do this addition of g thirty times, you get a point on the elliptic curve. You take the x coordinate of the point, and then that will be uh, then hash to the address that corresponds to the private key 30. So that's that's all the only thing that's going on. And of course, uh, the nice thing about these elliptic curves is that you can actually sign stuff. For example, you can sign messages. In particular, sign uh, I allow uh, money to be transferred from this address to that address, and then the Bitcoin protocol executes this after validation. Um, I discussed this a little bit. I have a video um, on on the digi digital signature algorithm where I go in some detail about the, the exact uh, protocol messages as they are found on uh, Bitcoin as well. So this was years ago here. Okay, so um, I hope you liked it. I stayed under uh, half an hour. <laughs> I don't care.